All right, everybody. Good evening and welcome back to another episode of the New Ridge Line podcast. I'm Devin Dunnigan and here with me, as always, is Mr. Stephen Mott. How you doing, brother? Great, brother Jake on New Ridge Line. All righty. So today we are back and we are going to be reviewing the more recent release of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So the sequel that came out this year directed by David Blue Garcia. And I can't even tell you who the writers of this movie are, but yeah, this went through uh, and a very interesting process to come out and all I'll get into it a little bit more here and there throughout the the video here but yeah this will be the first movie review we've done since the halloween kills episode that we did back in october for our halloween special but yeah i mean going into this movie i mean people had the last time we had saw a texas chainsaw movie was the leatherface film from 2017 i did a ranking of the series on my channel and I pretty much bashed that movie. I'm I'm still not a fan of that film. I've only saw it all the way through once. And I really have no, no interest in going back and watching it. But that was with Lionsgate. Eventually, I think it was Legacy Pictures picked it up. Something like that. Or Village Road, Roadshow Pictures. So, something like that. They, they picked up the rights to the franchise. And then they greenlit a texas chainsaw massacre movie and one of the producers was i can't remember exactly if i think it was fetty alvarez the guy who directed the evil dead remake from 2013 great great film there i totally recommend that i'm going to do a little bit of research right now just to make sure i'm o i'm okay on the facts here because I really and truly didn't do much research going into it. I did know the director, David Blue Garcia. But yeah, it was a long road getting to this one. Yeah, Fetty Alvarez, I was right. But yeah, this was a long road getting into this film. I mean, it was kind of, you were hearing through the grapevine, people were talking about, well, this is supposed to be this great direct sequel to the original we're going with an elderly leather face and we're going with the kind of 2018 halloween route of we're going to bring back one of the original characters and, or kind of the original heroine but it kind of was a cheat because the the actress who played the original heroine has since passed away so they had to recast her and eventually the original directors they had were fired, I believe like two weeks into the shoot. So they hired David Blue Garcia. I'm not too sure if there were any rewrites or anything like that going into it. I just heard that things just did not work out with those first two directors. And so they went with David Blue Garcia. And I don't really know what David Blue Garcia has done before this. I just really... First time I heard his name come up was this film now. So, like I said, Fetty Alvarez, I knew from the Evil Dead remake and all. But, I mean, in terms of this film, I mean, you heard all this stuff about it. I mean, it was, they had a test screening and people were like, oh, this sucked. You heard that it was just horrible, that nothing went as planned. And, Eventually, it was delayed and delayed and delayed, and then eventually Netflix got the rights, and we're going to release it earlier this year. And there were there was little to no promotion for this film. I mean, you got a, like a teaser trailer, I believe, late last year, and then you got the trailer right before the film came out. Uh, you did get like this teaser poster way back, I believe in like 2020, 2020. 2021 early 2021 something like that or maybe even 2019 because i think it had been in the works since that time and yeah it was not legacy pictures it was legendary pictures i don't know what in the world i was talking about like i said i didn't do research for this particular episode i'm just kind of this is a review so 
I kind of, we're kind of just going off the fly here, but yeah, this came out and it's generally split fans right down the middle. And yeah, I mean, we'll, Stephen, do you want to go first here to kind of give your thoughts and opinions on this particular film, or do you want me to go ahead? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can say I can say a bit, and then we can kind of go off of each other, I guess. Okay, that's fine. That's the way I'm thinking, but not be too structured. But anyway, <clears throat> I mean, well, when I when I well when I first saw it, I've only seen it once, but uh, I watched it, and it took me, to be honest, about two weeks to watch it. <laughs> I seen the first half of it, and then I kept wanting to get around to watch the second half, and then I kept on getting distracted. I'd get called out of the room. I had to go do something else, and then I'd say, "Well, dang!" And uh, and then the internet would mess up, like right in the middle of a scene or something. Like for example, the scene where <laughs> the scene where the um, the older cop lady or whatever. I don't I don't know if she's a cop or whatever. But you know, I'm not a cop, but the uh, the farmer lady, you know, she had the shotgun, and, and she was she was it was right in the middle of that scene where she had the shotgun and was about to trying to shoot him and all that, and and the internet messed up. I mean, I, I was like, oh my god! I mean, it was like, could you have paused at the worst spot? <laughs> but anyway, I, I think it was a really good film, and. Um, to be honest, I don't know that I've ever seen a Texas Chainsaw Massacre all the way through before, you know. So I wouldn't know what to compare it to. But I really, I mean, just watching it, just me, you know, not knowing much about the history of it all, I I, I enjoyed it, you know, enjoyable. I mean, it was it was gruesome, gruesome enough, you know. But I noticed on Netflix it says about the same thing, like. You know, the, on, it has Scream and it has Halloween uh, 2007, I think, or something on there. And, and it says, like, ominous, whatever that means, gore, and something else. But it says the same thing for every horror movie, and I'm thinking, that's stupid. But anyway, um, but it's got it's got this picture on there. I'm really getting off the wall, but I just got to tell this one thing. It's got this picture on Netflix and it, and it pops up when you're not watching it and, and it pops up and then it's got the, the miniature version of of the guy wearing the, the Michael Myers mask and I saw that and I was like, what in the crap? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, the, the film itself, it was like, I, I don't, I mean, it was, it was, it, it paced well. It, it seemed like, it, I mean, it was just a good, uh, it, it, it seemed very modernized, though. Modernized horror movie. Kind of like Scream 5 that came out here not too long ago, we went and saw. It's just, it, and, and Halloween Kills. It's just a more modernized version of the same concept, or what I would think, because there was one scene where there were people partying in the bus, and then... I mean, you know, I, I mean, all this stuff is a spoiler alert, obviously. But if you're, I, I mean, the way I see it, if you're watching a review of it, then, you know, you know, you, you're you going to get spoiled or some stuff. But, I mean, there's a bus full of people. And then he he makes it makes his way through the bus and kills every single one of them. And I'm like, OK, I mean, it's just going to go one by one through here, huh? Just. I mean, I can see where this is going, and it sure enough, you know, it, it it wound up to where every one of them but the two girls was killed, you know. And I'm like, um, okay, that's that's interesting. And at the, I, I like the ending though. That was my favorite part to where he he got the he got the uh, you know the knife and or the I mean the chainsaw and. Uh, he, he, they, they thought they were going to get away. But, you know, it's one of those things where in a horror movie, they usually just kind of, you know, the typical thing would be they just kind of ride off, you know, 
into the sunset, if you will, at the very end, you know, if there's, there's those couple of main characters that survive, you know, but this time one of them didn't, let's just say that. But, um, it's a, I just like that ending where he's standing there and, and holding a particular object in his hand and a chainsaw. So, and he holds it up. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know, Devin. So what'd you think about the ending and such? The whole going into this movie, I, I went into this movie with very, very low expectations. Or I'm not going to say low expectations, more or less middling expectations. Because, I mean, this being a Netflix movie, and I, I'm not saying anything against Netflix or the quality of stuff they put out or anything like that. But just in general, with all the stuff I had heard about this movie being supposedly a bad film all around this that and the other thing i liked it i really did i liked the movie i thought it was it was a pretty fun film i mean it was very gory they delivered on the gore i think at times and i mean you complain about gore in a horror movie i think they went a bit overboard at points in this movie i think maybe they could have took it could have took it back a little bit and kind of made it a little bit more suspenseful and kind of you have to use your mind to kind of see what happened it kind of go back to the first movie but special effects wise they did a really good job on the gore i mean all across the board it it, it was a great job there the characters, I mean, I really and truly think they were written to the where you just did not like any of them. You were just like, okay, you're cannon fodder. Just let's get it done. Let's get it going here. And I mean, a lot of people are calling this woke. I, I, I see that a little bit with the characters and what they were doing and like the, the stances here and there. But there were also, I mean, it was kind of like anti-woke because every one of them get – get theirs in the end. So it was kind of like, this is you're they're taking the cancel culture and, and wokeness and all, and just basically saying heck with it, and taking it out. But I mean, I'm not trying to get, get into all of that there, but that was a big point. A lot of people were making with this movie. So I had to bring it up, but I mean, in terms of a Texas chainsaw massacre movie, I, I dug it. I mean, is it great? No, not particularly. No, I can't even speak. Can't say that word. No, it's, it wasn't great. But I generally liked it. I'll watch it again. I only saw it once. And overall, like I said, I did like it. And I, I thought some of the acting was okay. And then there were other actors in the movie that were just not that great. And I mean, some of the stuff that stuck out to me, like the ambulance scene when he's in the back of the ambulance, the way I thought they were actually going to play that scene out was the big bumbling guy that was walking around with it, with his mother or whatever. I thought that was just going to be some random character. I thought it was just going to be a red herring and a leather face was actually going to be like in hiding, like a recluse and all that. No one knew he was even still alive, but it went right into he's leather face. I mean, he breaks the guy's hand and, and basically it's a massacre on the back of an, of a van or whatever. And I mean, Gore, like I said, Gore was like, really good in this movie i mean if you're a gore hound that there's gore in the movie the special effects they did a good job on and a lot of people complained about the return of sally hardesty yeah it was definitely a throwback to halloween 2018 even in some of the dialogue it, it's ripped straight from it and i mean i thought personally they should have explored that character a bit more i would have actually enjoyed a little bit more with that character instead of having what they did to where she 
is basically on the road majority of the movie why everything's happening and then at the like toward the end of the movie he then walks in or she then walks in with the gun doesn't even shoot him she has enough time to shoot him doesn't shoot him he doesn't even really care that she's even there and he walks out and then basically he continues his chase after those other people and it's basically him on basically a road of vengeance against those guys those those teenagers or college kids whatever they are for them being the cause of his mother's death because there's the whole thing where basically they were wrong they wanted to force this lady out of her house and she she owned it it was hers and they wanted to force it out saying basically she was lying that she didn't know what she was talking about and all this that and the other thing and i mean that was an interesting twist for this movie and i mean i'm just interested overall to see what they do next if they let the series rest after this one after because it was not received well i mean general fans of the series it split them down the middle some people liked it some people didn't a lot of people compared this to halloween kills and i I probably would say halloween kills is the better made movie between the two but i would say this is the this is the one i prefer and i'm not a fan of halloween kills i know i gave it some praise when we did the halloween kills commentary and discussion back for our halloween special but I, I I I went back a couple of times and tried to watch it. I, I just I don't care too much for it, and I mean it, I, it is what it is in my opinion. But I I mean I just don't care that much for the film. Looking at it now, but this one, I mean, I liked it. I mean it kind it's it's kind of is what it is with me. I mean it, it's a horror film. I just think at this point, the ideas have gotten to the point now to where it's kind of unoriginal. You're getting a lot of requels, which they made fun of in Scream or Scream 5, whatever you want to call it. They made fun of that, and it's pretty much every movie they put out, and I I know it, and I hate to say this, but if they ever make another Friday the 13th, it's going to be the same exact deal. They're going to pick up from like part four or something like that, and it's going to be a requel. They're going to leave out a good amount of the sequels. And now, Fetty Alvarez says that this is a sequel to the first four. So I I also read it was a direct sequel, and then now he said that this was not really a direct sequel, that it was more or less you have to pick your own timeline pretty much to figure out where everything goes in which i mean that's a confusing enough freaking timeline as it is going with the first four movies then you have the two remake things and then the first set of requels and then this i mean very confusing crap but as a whole yeah i dug it i mean as a whole to me, it's just a good modern horror film. And I think a lot of people, going back to what I was saying, they're getting now to where they kind of take what they, they can get when it comes to horror films like this. I mean, they after Scream, you, you kind of stopped getting original ideas. Like you had like Urban Legend and I still know, or I still, I know what you did last summer, which had sequels, but really never turned into these real long franchises say like friday the 13th or halloween and i mean halloween's still going now nightmare on elm street's been in limbo for a few years now no one knows where that's even gonna go but yeah i mean in terms of the movie itself i think a lot of people were just kind of taking what they could get with it i know a lot of people were really up in arms saying oh you're hypocritical if you like this and you don't like Halloween kills or you like Halloween kills and you don't like this, I mean, Oh, whatever opinions are opinions. I mean, good Lord, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I'd like it. I hope it comes out on Blu-ray. I'd love to have a Blu-ray copy of this. 
I kind of think that, I mean, with horror fans being such big groups and stuff like that, they're going to do a, a DVD Blu-ray release of this at some point, maybe not right now, but maybe later on down the road. I hope so. I, I have seen that there, there, there's copies online and stuff like that floating around. But, yeah, I mean, I hope this does get a, a media release. And, yeah, I mean, another little tidbit of information here, Don, John Larroquette came back. He was the guy that went the narrator at the beginning of the original and the remakes. And he came back here and did the narration type thing. So that was, that was really cool to hear that. But I, I liked... I like the Sally Hardesty character. I thought that they should have went a lot more into her character. I know a lot of people were like, oh, she, she she's Laurie Strode from 2018 and Halloween Kills. They should have never done that. I disagree. I would have much preferred the story to follow her than the people we got. And, yeah, I mean, I would have much preferred that probably. But, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, they did bring her back for the first time in the series. I mean, she hadn't been brought back since the original, and I thought that was kind of interesting. And I did like the guy who played Leatherface. I liked the look of Leatherface overall. I thought that made sense where he got his mask and all. I thought that was an interesting way to take it. And I don't want to spoil it too much, which, I mean, if you've not seen it by now, I mean, whatever, but – yeah, I mean, overall, I'd probably have to give this like a 7 out of 10. I mean, it was enjoyable to me. I liked it. I'm going to check it out again pretty soon, see if my opinion's changed any. But, yeah, Stephen, you got anything else to say? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'd just say that, that I'd rate it probably – I I just rate a, a ten out of ten just because, I mean, like I said, I don't know about the history, but just watching it, just just watching it with no, but with not much perspective, you know, it was just it was enjoyable, and I mean, I almost the way that the way it was structured, I almost started like you you almost want to pull for pull for the killer, you know, because <laughs> it's almost uh, it's they almost try to turn it around like. Like the uh, the other people are the the villains, you know, like they're coming in and taking over the town and all this. But you know, it's kind of a backwards way of looking at it. But anyway, I say I'd say ten for me. But just you know, enjoyed watching it. But anyway, that's all I got to say. So back. To- all righty, and just in terms of a sequel. I mean, who knows if we are, we're going to get a sequel to this. I mean, I think I talked about a little bit ago about the sequel and stuff like that, but I may have not have. Who knows? But, yeah, who knows if we get a sequel. I know the director has expressed interest in doing a sequel to this, depending on how well it does or if the studio decides to go forward with it. So I, I'd love to see them follow this up. But at the same time, I mean, I, I'm kind of to the point, like, do something different with the franchise or just let it lie for a little while and then come back to it and do something. I, I'm just to the point, like, all these requels and stuff. I mean, I'm glad the franchises are still going. I mean, we're going to go see Halloween ends when it comes out, I know already. But... I mean, it's just in terms of these film franchises. I mean, pick a timeline and go with it. Expand upon it. I mean, if it's an oddball idea, expand upon it. Explain yourself. Do something with it. And I think that's somewhat what they were trying to do with the Halloween trilogy that's out now. I'm interested to see what Halloween ends is going to be like. But... Like I said, I did not care for Halloween Kills that much. I'm going to go back and watch both that and 2018 here very soon. I'm going to do a double feature and watch them both back to back. But, yeah, I mean, that's it. I don't have very much else to say. This will probably be a more sh- one of our shorter episodes. I mean, 
probably one of the shortest we've ever done. But I mean, we just wanted to review this. We'd both seen the film and I had kind of mentioned it before about let's do a Texas Chainsaw movie discussion because I mean, we had done, we had done the Halloween Kills episode and I thought it would be interesting to kind of spread our wings and try out something a little bit new I hope it goes over well I hope everyone enjoys this when it does come out but yeah I mean I'm interested in doing some more episodes like this in the future and kind of giving each of our thoughts and maybe they'll be much longer who the heck knows but in terms of this film though I mean I dig it I liked it. I mean, time will tell if I like it more, if I like it less. I've saw a lot of, like I said, I've saw a lot of fans who hate this and a lot of fans who really love this sequel. And a lot of them su- surprised me with the love they gave to it. And I mean, yeah, I'm very, I mean, for what it is, it's just fine to me. It's a passable Texas Chainsaw movie. And I don't mean passable in a negative sense. I actually think it was actually pretty good. So. Any final words, Steve? Uh, no, I mean, I don't know. All I got to say is, is the DTM and the Ridge Line is back. Yep, we are back. So, yeah, that is the episode of New Ridge Line, a movie review. And we will have this out very, very soon. When you're hearing this, of course, it'll be out. So, yeah, hope you all enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. And God bless you all. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay free, stay frosty. And Steve, do the honors. See you next time.